Welcome back, everybody, to more of Ruriko's Route and Princess Evangel with happiness. The girls are finally happy now. Yay! So now we're going to see what the results were of Ruriko staying up all night for Pantabelle. Pantabelle has been escaping as of late. We don't know where he's going or what he's doing. We don't even, we aren't even sure what it is. Doesn't matter. We got in touch via email, then met up in the recreation room later that night. Good evening. How are you today? Looking as lovely as ever. Veriko was sitting on the sofa and greeted me gracefully as always. Such a lady she is. Yeah. She was completely exhausted today, so we opted not to press the issue until later tonight. Aww. Did you fall asleep? Come on, you fell asleep, didn't you? Oh. Ruriko sighed heavily. Don't sell yourself short now. Huh? Oh, she couldn't chase after him, poor guy. Oh. She lifted her skirt a bit to show me her bandaged kneecap. Are you okay? Seeing a foreign object taped to her delicate white skin was oddly difficult to bear. That's good. Thank goodness. <laughs> she was able to brush off her accident like it was nothing. I believe that just exemplified how wonderful her personality was. I mean, it's pretty awesome, right? Right. On top of all that, she was beautiful, rich, and refined lady. How to describe her? Well, Ririko was utterly impeccable. Aww. I see. Wait, what? Can you actually go out in the middle of the night? There was a small room adjacent to the dorm's entrance, which acted similar to an apartment building's administrative office. And the teachers manned it in shifts. She would definitely have been questioned if she tried to come and go at strange hours. They have their own security force, as we've seen. What's the point of the shifts, right? So that someone doesn't just sit out there all night and fall asleep? Well, that makes sense. Well, it doesn't make dollars. The coexistence of strictness and lenience was a notable characteristic of Vincennes. Oh, she sighed and pet Pantrabelle's back. Pantrabelle looked comfortable. Completely unaware of his owner's frustration. Let me stay up with you, come on. Let's double team this. Let's double team this thing. You seem really bothered by all of this. Instinct is making me want to read every single line, even though I know I don't have to. 
に宿題を進めたいからと言って嘘をついて予定を遅らせることにしましたまあまあまあそれはありがとうございます。私、嬉しいです。Having her tell me that straight to my face made me blush, I'll admit. <laughs> I made the suggestion on impulse, but if it made her happy, then I was happy too. How could I not be happy? Look at that smile. Brightens up the day, it does. <laughs> Ririko, a lady of your stature should not be having such impure thoughts. It's very, very uncouth. Huh? Uh, no? I'll wait outside. You seem awfully disappointed by that declaration. Why do I feel so. disappointed? Was it because I wanted to try sleeping alongside them? Or with Ruriko, that only made what I felt stronger? But our relationship wasn't anything like that. No, we're just friends. It's truly platonic. Well, I think waiting outside your room would make following Pantabell easier, don't you? The way she smiled and promptly agreed with me was both a relief and a disappointment. Around what time does this usually happen? Two o'clock, huh? Oh, I guess I'll have to drink some tea myself, if you know what I mean. Amphetamines. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. Thank you. Amphetamines. That's what passion means, did you know that? In the streets? When, you know, when you go up to the dealer and say, Hey man, I want some passion. I know what you mean. P passion? <laughs> Alright. I believe she has said something like that once before. I didn't quite get what she meant, of course, but yeah, whatever the case, I didn't really get a bad feeling about it. Nah, we'll be fine. After I had my fill of the black tea Ruriko brewed for me, two o'clock had drawn close at hand. Config. You have to load a menu screen? What the heck? I just love this tune so much. Ah, uh, brings me back to the old days. Two years ago. Sneaking out was a piece of cake since my room was on the first floor. If I were on the second floor, it'd be noticeably more difficult. I went out the veranda, then migrated to the location we had previously guessed Pantava would escape from. Before long, a shadow of some sort descended down the wall, illuminated by the moonlight. Oh! Oh my god, look at that. That's floating! Pantava didn't look it, but he was incredibly agile. He swiftly made his way down to the ground, turned around, and started to run off somewhere. Is that me? Shit. My cell phone, which I had put on vibrate, buzzed. Moshi Moshi. Yeah, I spotted him. I'll follow him now. I'm going there. Roger that. I'm Eriko. 
If we stayed in constant contact and navigated the area, she would likely be able to catch up to me. There's no need for you to rush, okay? Take your time. I got this. Where is this? I came upon a winding path while following the small yet nimble shadow. I never knew we had a hilly road like this on campus. I don't know. Yeah, we're going up some kind of mountain path. I answered in a low voice. I couldn't really tell whether Pantabelle had noticed me or not. Do you know about it? The Lodge. The Lodge? We had something like that on campus? Lots of incentives for you, you know, always crap popping up everywhere. I swear to god the new science button just popped up overnight. It was not there on Friday. Okay. Pantabelle was ascending the mountain path with no hesitation in his step. I could sense he had a destination in mind, and most of all, he seemed very familiar with this trail like he's traveled it many times. This must be the place where he was running off to every night. I looked back, but I still couldn't see any sign of Ruriko. Wow, there's a building like this here? I wondered if everyone stayed here during summer vacation. There wasn't a soul around. It was deathly silent. Pantabelle's destination did not appear to be the lodge as he changed course without hesitation. Where's he going? Um, Rurik... Uh... What the? I could hear peculiar breathing from the other end. Th this voice. My appetite was suddenly stirred. I forgot about chasing after Panda Bell and pushed the phone hard up to my ear. Crap, my lower body was tingling with anticipation. After subtly adjusting my pants, I tilted my head in confusion. So what in the world is going on with Ruriko? Uh, oh, walking got to be too intense for her and she's just out of breath? Yeah, that's what I thought. Bunch of perverts, all of you. If that's all it was, her voice was way too erotic. <clears throat> um, Ruriko? Are you out of breath? Config. How loud are the voices? Oh, I should turn all those up. Why did I turn them? Oh, why did I turn them down? We're turning them all up. There you go, boom. I'll head your way then. I'll give you a push. <laughs> I probably had a rough idea of where Pantable was going now that we'd come this far, so even if I lost sight of him, that's just how it was. I couldn't exactly have Ruriko be when she sounded so short of breath and so very, very erotic.
Ruriko. Hiya, buddy. Oh, wow, you're really loud. Holy crap. A relieved smile rose to her lips. She tossed her shoulders back and her soft hair clung to her forehead. I unwittingly found myself fascinated by her red, flushed face. Um, uh, he, he turned at the lodge and then kept going ahead. We have a lake? Man, I really gotta look at those brochures more carefully. The lake? There's one of those here too? No, I'm not. I've never heard of it before. A lake on private property? Amazing! Where's all the shit in the first game, man? I would love to go to a lake. I see. First I've heard of that. Wow! That was a little unexpected, considering Ririko was so bad at performing physical activities of any kind, it seems. It's a miracle she can even stand up right now. Okay, let's go there and take a look. Need to push on the back? Oops, oh, you fell down the cliff. Well, clumsy me. I walked behind her and gently placed my hand on her back. I could tell how smooth her skin was even through her clothes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Is it? I imagine it is. But teases her how? Also, strange noises? I get it now. Like this? The fabric of her dress was thin, and strangely got my heart pounding. Um, if it tickles too much, would you like me to stop? Sure, seems like Ririko gets off on people touching her back, although she doesn't realize it yet. I shook the idle thoughts from my head and focused on the task at hand. Get it at hand, touching her back. <laughs> it seemed as though concentrating would be very difficult. What, what am I concentrating on? I'm just touching her back. No problem. I felt some regret when I pulled my hand away. Just a little bit. It would have been great if we could keep going along this mountain path alone together forever. And ever and ever. That was what I thought about as I felt her in the palm of my hand. Here she feels the same way. Score! It's alright. It's fine. I shook my head decisively. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but uh, I... I was actually thinking the same thing. <laughs> Can you believe it? I know, it's crazy, right? It was like, you know, I wanted this time to continue on forever. Or something corny like that. Uh, eh? 
Uriko nodded happily. Great! The smooth cheeks were tinged a bright shade of red, so much so that I could see it under the moonlight. Seeing that made me both happy and embarrassed at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Miriko herself was far lovelier than any moon. But of course, I couldn't exactly say something like that out loud. We stood shoulder to shoulder and headed for the lake. There were planks running along the ground and it didn't seem we would have to worry about getting lost. Wow, who knew there would be a place as pretty as this here? The moonlight reflected off the lake's quiet surface, making for a very picturesque sight. Oh, it looks like it'd be a great place to swim. I turned to the shore. The calm waves gently rushed against the shore, making quiet ripples as they broke. It was a little hard to tell in this darkness, but since Ririko said so, I was sure the water was very pretty. Not as pretty as her, of course. We stayed up all goddamn night to chase that thing. And he's going swimming. <sighs> swimming, huh? Oh, looks like he's noticed us. I hadn't heard it since there was a fair distance between us, but I sensed that he'd let out a cry of surprise. Ha uh ha. -huh. Prandabelle swam toward us in an unexpectedly dexterous manner. He's doggy paddling. Prandabelle was really adept with those short little forefeet of his, huh? Well, if you can call those feet. He splashed, hopped from the water, and claimed his usual place. Maybe Pantrabelle just enjoys swimming? Well, if you need something to hold while you sleep, I'm free. She had mentioned something like that before. Rico would hold him up against her ample bosom, huh? Pantrabelle, I'm jealous of you, little man. Something tells me that wasn't the first time I felt that way. <laughs> Is that why he's been swimming along? You sure do like to cause people trouble, don't you? I gently pressed the pad of my index finger against his tiny forehead. His tail? Hmm. With that being said, I took a look and it did seem like his tail would be quite worth hugging. Oh, so adorable. Looks like it tickled. Well, if you ever need to release those restraints, I'm free. 
when you say restrain yourself, does that mean you sleep better if you're hugging something? So, this is it. My mother is a little bit of a day. I'm free. There were people who couldn't lay sleep unless they laid on their stomachs, so there must be a lot of differences between individuals and their posture and habits when sleeping. Sure. Yeah, let's sound scientific. But hey, you know, maybe it felt nice for Panchabel too. I shifted my eyes over to the lake's surface once more. Now, this place really does look much nicer than a pool, which we cleaned. Makes me want to go for a swim too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it is today, isn't it? I'd love to. I would love to. That tyrannical bitch. We can go swimming wherever we damn well please. She doesn't own the water, man. It's like God. Or something. Yeah. Oh, but, um, do you think lots of people will already be gone by tomorrow? A lot of people were saying that they were going home immediately after lunch today. Well, technically yesterday. <laughs> uh, um, I thought that was already implied. Ah. As soon as I said that, I was at a loss for words. All alone. With Ruriko? This unexpected development suddenly sent my heart racing. Oh my. <coughs> I looked up, my face bright red, and then she turned away shyly. You know, cute thing she does. When her face flushed, it seemed to accentuate her beautiful features even more. That sounds good. Yeah. I replied in an unintentionally hoarse voice. My elation made it difficult for me to even breathe. Okay, then, um, let's swim here. Together. Hi! Hearing her say something like that, and looking so happy about it, made my heart swell. I'm not a Grinch. Sure. Sounds good. And with that, it was decided that the two of us and her pet would go swimming together. Oh, I'm excited. How many chapters are on these roots? Chapter 2 starting, everybody. But we're going to get to that on Wednesday. Start of summer break. So I will see you all on Wednesday. Have a good day. And I hope you all tune in for the next episode where we get to go swimming with Ruriko. Have a good day.